Hey everybody, welcome to a new episode of The King Chase. Today I got a classic example, it's so beautiful and maybe most of you already are familiar with this example, but if you're not, you can really look forward to a special piece today. So the game is Pulgievsky against Metz Metinov, um, played in Sochi, let's see, 1958. It's black to move, obviously, because white is attacking the black queen. And you can see the white king is already quite in the open on e3. But the question is now how to proceed. And well, it's your turn as always. Um, I ask you to stop the video, really dive into position, calculate. It's quite a challenging example if you, if you don't know it yet, um, if you haven't seen it before. So you can really calculate quite a lot here, spend some time and then compare what you saw with what actually happened in the game. All right, so when you're ready, I'm going to move on now. So the move Nets Metinov played was rook takes f4. If he just, well, if he moves his queen, then white would just win the bishop in h6, Could give one check here, but that's not enough. So that would be just winning for white. So actually black has to come up with something and he came up with an astonishing move here rook takes f4 sacrificing his queen if white takes the rook then just bishop takes f4 and the point is that now if the knight takes f4 knight takes c2 it's forcing white to give up his queen queen takes queen takes and of course this is completely winning so White took the queen. And now rook f3, double check. As you know, with double checks, the king always has to move because, well, white cannot in one move eliminate both uh, check giving pieces. So king d4, now the king is in the center of the board. But how to continue? Yeah, and here actually, there are already several ways. But I would like to ask you, still not that easy. I mean, it looks like black is about to mate, but not quite yet. So again, you can stop the video and try to find a solution here. All right. In the game, Nezmetinov played bishop g7, which is winning. Um, another winning move was c5 check. The point is that after d takes c6, now, not knight takes c6, because actually it's interesting, after both Knight e takes c6, king c4, and knight b takes c6, king d5. The knight moving away to give the check is always opening up a new square for the king and white is holding on. But instead of taking back, actually b5. And now obviously taking away this square on c4, now threatening knight e takes c6 mate. And white pretty much has only one way to cope with that by playing bishop d3, allowing the king to go back to c3 but now the king is chased back but in the process white is just losing too much material here bishop takes b2 the queen is still hanging and the rook is hanging obviously so king f1 but now just rook takes d1 rook takes d1 we count the material and we see black is having two minor pieces for the rook plus a pawn there's more than enough material and he's just winning here all right, there was one possibility, but bishop g7, of course, also very tempting because, well, obviously white is not having any any option to get out of this, um, this covered check. But still, um, white played a4 here, and then it wasn't too difficult anymore for black. Actually, knight, g5, knight g1 was an interesting try. And now, believe it or not, black just takes the pawn on g3. Just takes this pawn. And white doesn't have anything better to move the knight back to e2. And now the difference is, <laughs> black just moves the rook back. Very interesting position. And now the difference is that this pawn is gone, which allows black sometimes to attack this rook on h2. And there's a specific variation I can show you. Um, 
knight e3 check and now the point being that now e5 which was possible previously is not that good anymore because here the, the rook on um, h2 is always hanging while king e4 is now made on c5 and king c4 then knight takes b2 winning a queen and then the rook is also hanging so that's no good um, so instead white can try king c4 immediately and then knight takes b2 king takes b4 and now bishop c3 check king a3 the king chase is continued b5 threatening b4 mate um, b4 wouldn't help for white now because of a5 bringing this rook into play and it's all over and if queen d4 actually to avoid being checkmated then of course black takes this queen knight takes f3 bishop c3 back again threatening checkmate b4 is forced knight c4 check king b3 bishop takes a1 here my variation finishes black has regained the material more than regained it obviously he has two pawns he's po two pawns up and he's winning here so that would that would have posed a lot more problems to solve for, for black to win the position but let's see the game white played a4 and one more time i would like to ask you to now finish the white king off at this point so stop the video and finish him off all right now c5 check d takes c6 and simply b takes c6 calmly just retaking now obviously threatening checkmate with c5 and white tried bishop d3 but it's all in vain knight e takes d3 check king c4 and now there's just a series of checks d5 e takes c5 c takes d5 king b5 and now the last black piece is participating in the attack rook b8 check only move king a5 and now knight c6 check and white resigned because after king a6 well black is actually having a choice he can mate with knight c5 knight b4 rook b6 probably knight c5 would be most aesthetic yeah this game is also called nets matinov's immortal game because well it was just a brilliant brilliant queen sacrifice the consequences were not that clear but i guess he also counted on his intuition and he saw the king on d5 d4 just has to be made it in some way or the other great game let me know in the comments if you already know the game or if you could solve the the um position quite a difficult one i believe um, let me know how it went let me know how you liked it all right i'll see you next time bye